Shamil probably forgot about me. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. That's my fault. That's my fault. That's my fault. I'm sorry. Uh, life been life in. But I'm, hey, I miss y'all. We are here. Have y'all been keeping up with the NBA? Now, I didn't expect to wake up and see Dame going to the Bucks. They might have the highest chance to win now. Huh? I'm trying to think about the, I'm trying to run down the list, but, uh, I mean, don't sleep because they, they just gave up Drew Holiday and sent him to the Celtics. And Drew Holiday is a very, very, very good defensive piece. So, I mean, we'll see. Um, with that being said, I ain't finna waste too much of your time. We finna hop straight into this video. It's been a minute. Bear with me. Uh, yeah. Let's hop straight into it. You want to see something interesting? Here is a chart of every single teammate Giannis Antetokounmpo has played with in the NBA. Uh -huh. That's every player <clears throat> in every season for the past 10 years. And they're all plotted based on how good they were in terms of box plus minus and win shares. Now, over the years, Giannis has wow. played with a lot of guys. OJ Mayo, Jabari Parker. Jabari supposed to be so nice. Jason Terry for two seasons. Kind of a weird overlap. <sighs> But his best teammates have all came in the last few seasons. Brooke Lopez, See? Drew Holiday, Lizzo, Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday. There's some good seasons in here by some good players. Facts. And Giannis has made the most of it. And then there's his new teammate, Damian Lillard, who will easily be the best player he's ever played with. The in so <laughs> So you mean to tell me, right? Um, first of all, that's like a 2.2 2 .2 number jump and whatever this chart is. And it goes all the way up to 7.5. Damian Lillard will be spraying that John from the three, right? Giannis go clean it up along with Brooke Lopez and Chris Middleton. Mm-hmm. As long as that bench is extensive, we looking at another Bucks championship. S Prove me wrong. NBA's got a new super team. And right now, they're the favorites to win it all. Uh-huh. Already. My first pick gonna be Damian Lillard. That's crazy, video bro. Was sponsored by Seat Geek. With football season All right, I'm gonna I'm watch this. Right around the you corner. feel me? Save yourself the time and hassle but for y'all, I'm gonna just go ahead and... Killer deals with... As a Blazers fan, I've seen some dark days. Days I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. Mm. I saw my team rally their way to the conference finals for the first time in two decades just to get swept and never return. I've had to watch the player that we passed up on turn into an all-time great. While the guy we picked couldn't... An all-time snake? even stay on the court. I watched Brandon Roy <laughs> blossom into a star and then retire mm. literally 50 games later due to injuries. That's tough. This is enough to make a man go insane. I got to do a video on Roe. The chosen I got to. One, our loyal king, the one glimmer of hope in a bleak and desolate franchise, just packs up and leaves to the Bucks, and we get stuck <laughs> with DeAndre <Bruh>. Aiden, <laughs> a guy we aren't even going to keep, a rookie and a seventh grader. Bro, and I'm relax, not even bro, sure where relax. the Bucks came from. The Blazers and the Heat were stuck in one of the weirdest, most drawn out stalemates for the last three months. Mm. And out of nowhere, the Bucks came and picked him up for actually a reasonable price. And as sad as I am to see Dame go, That's tough. I'm happy for the guy. Despite everything he's given to the Blazers, the organization never quite put him in a position to win. The That's man has been in the league for 11 seasons and yeah. has played with only one All-Star. And even that was nearly a decade ago. Mm. In fact, throughout his career dame has made seven all nba teams a feat only 46 players throughout the history of the nba have accomplished and out of these players only 13 of them never won a championship in the nba Dang. and these 13 nash players, whether i'm tripping nash ain't got one that's sick in the head bro i'm sad i'm, I'm sick a hey, i don't got one kind of sick chris paul don't got one but I 
I don't know why. Um, Sick Russell ain't got one. We all know why Malone and Barkley don't got one. You know what I'm saying? If you just look right behind me, if you can see him. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but <laughs> anywho. Um, that's tough. Whether active or retired are all regarded in the same dismissive fashion. All-time greats who never won a ring. Only four that's of them tough. are active today. Chris Paul, James Harden, Russell Westbrook, and Damian Lillard. And all four of them have reached the same point in their careers. Don't be the guy who had a stellar career with all the awards and achievements, but no championship to show for it. Dang, and so after tough. three months of uncertainty, I think this is about the best case scenario, not only for Lillard, but for Giannis and the Bucks. Oh, this is highest fact, probability to win. was actually foreshadowed last season during the 2023 All-Star Draft selection over every other All-Star reserve. Mm. Giannis picked Damian Lillard with his first pick. Back in 2022, Dame was asked who he would play with if he could choose any active player. His answer was Giannis. Fast forward 18 months, and they both got their wish. So now that he's on the Bucks, and they both got they a think teammate they slick. that far exceeds anyone else they've ever played with, how good is this duo, actually? It will We've be. seen <laughs> countless pairs of superstars get hyped see. up with grand expectations just to fall short and achieve essentially nothing together. But if history has shown us anything, this duo is bound to do something great. In mm. terms of box plus minus, there have only been six duos in the history of the NBA that were as good individually as Giannis and Dame are. And out of those six duos, four of them went on to win the NBA championship that season. The only duos that didn't were Harden and CP3 in 2018, who lost to the eventual champs in the conference finals, mm. and Durant and Westbrook, who That's were tough. one game away from making the finals. History has shown us that when two players of this caliber pair up, it usually results in a championship, or at worst, a game or two away from the finals. We're looking at potentially they go one get of there the for best sure. duos of the last few decades. They go get last there for season, sure. Last season, Dame averaged 32 points, 7 assists, and 4 rebounds a game. Oh my god. What can y'all do? What can you do? I mean, obviously them numbers ain't gonna be like this. This coming season, them like they gonna have to share. <laughs> they gonna have to share because Chris Middleton also, if he stay healthy, you know he gonna get at least eighteen. But bro, twelve rebounds. That's I'm telling you. You know what I'm saying? Even if you play some two K, you know how you know how valuable them rebounds is, bro. Man, a lot of Dame average of five is kind of uh, that's that's a that's a good stat too. You know, being that he's not that tall, you know, in the NBA. But thirty two point two points is insane. We'll see though. We can't just go off stats. We'll see when the season start. But this is looking kind of crazy. Now, those aren't just historically great numbers. That's a stat line that only Michael Jordan, James Harden, and Luka Doncic have ever achieved in the history of the NBA. Even mm. crazier, Dame did all of this on record high efficiency. And last season, Giannis put up 31 points, 11 rebounds, and five assists per game. A stat line that hasn't been achieved since Wilt Chamberlain did it nearly 60 years ago. We all know just how dominant Giannis is, but I think spending the last decade in the shadow of arguably the greatest point guard ever has made Dame one of the most underrated stars in the league. Both of them are coming off of historically great seasons. We haven't seen a pair like this since KD joined Steph in the Warriors back in 2017. I mean, they gotta win, in right? Fact, the last time in modern NBA history, two volume scorers of this caliber paired up was never. Over the last 50 years, there hasn't been a single duo that averaged at least 30 points per game and then played together in the following season. Not Kevin Durant and James Harden, not Curry and Durant, That's not crazy, LeBron bro. and Wade, not even Kobe and Shaq. But it's not just how dominant Giannis and Dame are, it's the fact that their games perfectly complement one another. Individually, defenses are forced to scheme against Dame That's and what I just said. in polar opposite ways. But together, there's not a team in the league who has the defensive personnel to cover the deep ball and the pick and roll and the low post. Just think, every single attempt at creating a superstar tandem in recent years involves two players that usually have similar strengths and weaknesses. As good as Kyrie and Durant were, their games didn't complement one another. 
Kawhi mm. and PG are great individually, but as a whole, their skill sets are far too similar to create a real dynamic offense. Most of the time, just taking turns on who's going to get the next possession. Facts. Even LeBron and Facts. AD are two oversized forwards who tend to play away from the basket and dominate possessions one turn at a time. For the exact opposite reason, this is why I think the duo of Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic work so well. Right, Two completely right, different, right. but compatible we, place. We can't, I, I'm tripping. I mean, we obviously can't leave the Nuggets out of the picture, but like, bro, I mean, that's going to be a battle though. Hold up. Jamal Murray and Dane, and then you got Jokic versus Giannis? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Styles. Aside from Murray, who isn't quite a superstar, That's and Jokic, the last legendary. time we saw a duo that was made up of two megastars with complementary skills and positions that could be a finals was matchup, two huh? decades ago with Shaq and Kobe. Damian Lillard's demand to be traded wasn't yep. some breach of loyalty. It was an attempt to regain control of his career and earn a real chance at winning like mm. many others before him have done. How many all-time greats put their loyalty first and foremost and paid the price because of it? A lot. Guys like Reggie Miller, Dominique Wilkins, Patrick Ewing, generational talents whose careers get lost in the shuffle because they never climbed to the top of the mountain. They never overcame the final obstacle and won an NBA championship. It's almost like all the all-star selections and big performances and playoff wins become an afterthought or mm. some sort of relegated achievement because the ultimate goal was never achieved. Right. Is it better to stay with right. one organization with hopes that things will eventually work out despite things never quite working out? Or after years of holding up your end of the deal, is it better to finally do what's best for you and put yourself in a position to win? Now well, you gotta do the you. The answer lies with the players who did put themselves first. In the mid 2000s, Kevin Garnett's incredible talents were being flushed down the drain in Minnesota. And so he said enough is enough and went to Boston a move that changed the course of his career and legacy. If Kevin Durant never left OKC, we may not know him as a two-time champion in finals MVP, but rather another generational talent who could never quite get it done. That's what he would have been. LeBron James all made the decision to leave the franchise that drafted them for an organization that actually gave them a chance at winning a title. Because loyalty and fans and accolades aside, above all, every player wants to lift that trophy above their head and be crowned a champion. Something that was never going to happen with Damon Portland. So what do y'all think? Is this duo truly the favorites to win this year's title? Or are we getting ahead of ourselves like we've done countless times before in the past? No, I, I honestly think this they might win this, for winning, Or is this team going to be just another failed attempt at combining talents in hopes that it yields something great? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. We go see. And as always, until next time. Hmm. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section below, bro. I mean, like I said, when it comes to you got Dane spraying from three, Chris Middleton in the mid range, and you got Giannis dominating the paint. You got all of that, right? Brooke Lopez could spray that John too, and then do all that and go into the paint. I mean. I mean, obviously, we go see the new chemistries and the new different the different teams this year. But I'm 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 putting my money on the Bucks. I mean, I love I love the Warriors, bro. I love the Warriors. I rock with the Celtics. But I kind of want to see the Bucks win, bro. But with that being said, man, I'm going to catch y'all in the next video. I love and appreciate each and every one of you. Peace.